And yes, welcome again. We're on 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 7, all the way through to the end of the chapter, verse 18. More glory, more responsibility. Paul says, but if the service of death written engraved on stones came with glory. Now, Paul is talking about the the law of God that was written on stones in the days of Moses. So that the children of Israel could not look steadfastly on the face of Moses for the glory of his face, which was passing away. Won't service of the spirit be with much more glory? When the Torah of God, when the law of God was written on stone, Moses received this great revelation from God. And it was glorious. It was glorious that the law of God, that the ways of God, that the eternal attributes, the eternal character of God, as made known to us in the law of God, was written on stone. That was so glorious that when Moses came down from the mount, his face shone so bright. They said, "Put a, you know, put a veil over your face, so we can't, we we can't, we can't even look at your face anymore. It just shines with the glory of God." So what Paul is saying here, if the administration of the law through the engraving on stones, cold hard stones, came with much glory, how much more glory do we have when the Spirit of God himself writes that Torah on our hearts? It is much more personal. It's much more internal, intricately entwined within our being. So how much more glory, how much more beauty do we have? Wow. That reminds me of in Hebrews. Now we're going to get to the book of Hebrews and I am excited about the book of Hebrews. There's so much to say about the book of Hebrews, so much that I've never heard anybody else say. So it's going to be awesome. But in the book of Hebrews, it says when people violated the Torah of God, violated the law of God in Moses' day, they were put to death. How much more serious is it when we violate the law of God now, today, because now we have this much more intimate, much more powerful and personal administration of God's own law, his character, his personality within our hearts. That's when it says that those who willingly sin, it's like, you know, you got to be very careful. You're not trampling the blood of the Son of God under your feet. You don't want to have that guilt on your hands. For if the service of condemnation has glory, the service of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. The service of condemnation. So what does that mean? When Moses engraved the law of God on stone, that law you know, condemns a lot of people. So Paul said that is like the service of condemnation, whereas the new covenant in that God wrote his Torah on our hearts, that is the service of righteousness. You you might say, how is that? Explain that. It's the service of righteousness because not only do we have the Torah of God in our hearts, but we also have the Spirit of God, the very essence of God within our hearts to help us to fulfill that law. So we fulfill the law of God and the righteousness of God is shining through us through our works. And listen, if you really truly have the righteousness of Christ, I know there's a lot of Christians out there that go around and say, oh yeah, I have the righteousness of Christ in me. Listen, if you really truly have the righteousness of Christ, you will shine brighter than the sun. It would be impossible for you to cover up the righteousness that is coming out of you in every area of your life, out of your mouth, out of your actions, out of your lifestyle, out of everything that pours out of you, every area of your life will shine forth with the glory of the righteousness of Christ, which shines brighter than the sun. And you know, if you shine as bright as the sun, you just cannot cover that up. For most certainly, That which has been made glorious has not been made glorious in this respect by reason of the glory that surpasses. So the glory we have today, 
What Paul says here is even greater than the glory of Moses. Think about the glory, the beauty, the presence of God that Moses had. I'm talking about, you know, the cloud of his glory, the fire that appeared, the pillar of fire, the the earthquakes. You know, people were so afraid. They said to Moses, listen, we cannot bear this any longer. You go and you, you talk to God. We just can't stand this. We just can't stand this power any longer. Paul is saying we are supposed to have even more power, even more glory. Because that same God, the God of Moses, fills our hearts, writes that Torah on our hearts so that the the tablets, can you imagine looking at, can you imagine if, if you were to look at the tablets that God wrote with his own finger? Can you imagine if you were to look at the tablets that, that, that actually had the law of God written on them? You know, to look at that and to to really realize this, you know, these are the tablets that Moses had. This it was in the Ark of the Covenant that manifested so much power, like people died in the presence of the Ark of God, the Ark of the Covenant. So Paul is saying here, we have more glory that surpasses that glory. Now, to be quite honest with you, most, most Christians by far, most people who claim themselves to be Christians, and even most people who go to church, don't really even have a clue what this is, let alone actually experiencing it, because they've never truly been born again. They've never truly sacrificed their desires, their life, their, you know, everything that they have, everything that they are, all of their pride, all of their desires, all of their plans, everything that, their reputation. They haven't sacrificed everything. They haven't put everything on the line. They have not identified with Jesus on the cross. They have not come to the same place that Paul was when he said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified. Not I'm going to be, not, you know, I will be. I am am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. They haven't come to that point yet. So they haven't really been sacrificed. They haven't really come to that point of denying themselves, taking up their cross and following Jesus. That is the first step. The second step is really being filled with the Spirit of God, where the Spirit of God comes in you and you become a new creation in Christ. The Spirit of God creates a new world inside of you, so to speak, just as the Spirit of God created this world. Okay, you become a new creation in Christ. You can can honestly say the old is all gone and the new is come. The old sinful self is gone and the new righteous self has come. For if that which passes away was with glory, much more that which remains is in glory. Having therefore such a hope, we use great boldness of speech, and not as Moses, who put a veil on his face, that the children of Israel wouldn't look steadfastly on the end of that which was passing away, but their minds were hardened. For until this very day, at the reading of the old covenant, the same veil remains, because in Christ it passes away. But to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. But, but, whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That is a stark contrast to the Spirit of Mestema, or the spirit of the devil, who really forces his way in your life, really forces his way in your life. When you, know, you give the devil uh, an inch, he will really force you to take a mile. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Not liberty to sin, but liberty to worship God, liberty to do what is right in God's sight and according to to the scriptures. But we all with unveiled face, seeing the glory of the Lord as in a mirror. Don't forget in those days, the mirrors weren't as clear as they are today, are transformed into the same image 
from glory to glory, even as from the Lord, the Spirit. Paul says, when you take that veil away from your heart, when you humble yourself, and when you stop justifying yourself, and you just receive the Word of God, and you, you, know, you do actually what it says in the Scriptures to do, to tremble at His Word. You're not trying to justify. You're not trying to write it off. You're tr- you are trembling at His Word. And you are looking at the Lord. You are looking at Him in all of His beauty. And may I remind you, that the Lord is the living Torah, okay? He is the living Torah. That is why Moses, when he received the Torah, it was from the very person, the very character of God, but it was in written form on stone. So Jesus is the personification of the Torah of God. And the scriptures are the written form of Jesus. Every true, authentic scripture, every thus saith the Lord, all the way from the, from the beginning until this day, is Jesus in written form. You want to know Jesus better? Start reading the old scriptures, okay? And I'm talking about not just the New Testament. I'm talking about all of the scriptures that were written before the coming of Jesus, before the birth of Jesus, That is how you truly put away the falsehood and you know who the real true Jesus is, the real true Messiah. Don't forget, the church in the book of Acts preached all of their sermons, preached the gospel, in in fact, from the scriptures that were written before Jesus was born again. That's all they had. They didn't have the Bible. They didn't have the New Testament back then. But as Paul said here, if we become as little children, We humble ourselves, we take that veil down, and we look at the glory of God. We look at the law of God. We look at the law, the written form of Jesus. We look at Jesus, the personification of the Torah, and we allow that glory to saturate us. We will reflect that glory. We will become one with that glory. Hallelujah. What an awesome thing that is. And how do you do that? Well, You've got to seek Him. You've got to seek God. You've got to pray. You've got to even fast if need be. You have to read the Scriptures. Pray that you're able to understand it. Pray and seek God with all your heart. And let me promise you something. And I promise you this on the authority of the Scriptures. If you seek God with all your heart, you will find Him. Call upon Him and He will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.